hey you guys we're going to jump right into it because my videos have been long I know but I told you guys that I'm not worrying about the time because I want you guys to have this information and it's valuable information information that people that are new to cruising such as myself usually don't know people um, usually learn these things because they've left some things out and they learned the hard way I'm giving you all this information all the information that I've learned over the past two months all the research that I've come across I'm giving you in several videos now I've already given you a video showing you things that you probably will forget things that will cost you a lot of money if you don't pack I did that video it'll be linked below and I also did a part one to this video. You have to watch that video because it will um, start you off and then you'll be able to finish with this video. So it's imperative that you watch all of those videos if you want to save big time, if you don't want to leave stuff out, and if you don't want to leave things behind that actually will benefit you on the cruise or any vacation because these things are transferable. It's not just for a cruise. You can use these things or these tips for anything. I also did a video on buying in bulk. Um, when you buy in bulk with like these wholesale or uh, food warehouses, because I'm going to take you guys next week with us because we go every three months, and I'm going to show you how it's done, how we break things down, how we go to the uh, the warehouse and buy, and that will save you about between sixteen hundred to twenty five hundred a year if you do that. Okay, so. Alright, so right now I'm, I'm doing the cruise tips and I'm finishing off where I left. Um, souvenirs. Okay. Now, of course we're going to want to have souvenirs. You want to have things that mark the fact that you were there for your own personal use. Um, so that when you look at those things, you remember all of the wonderful memories that you've created on your vacation. That's normal. So, they're going to have, as they always do, souvenir shops when you get to your location, your destination, and they're going to also have it on the cruise ship. Now, one of the things that a lot of people don't do, and they make a mistake, and they get ready to walk off the cruise to go home, and they look over, and they see it, and they're like, God day going it, I could have got that deal. Well, rather than wait till you already then spent the money, I'm going to tell you before you even get onto the cruise ship some of these tips. Now, the souvenir shop is going to have specials. They're going to have, uh, every day it's going to be something else special featured. Example, they may have, you know, I'm going to Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, so they may have Royal Caribbean Cruise water bottles, okay, on sale today, like half off. Then they may have, the next day they may have Royal Caribbean sweatshirts or t-shirts. So, you get what I'm saying. They, they're they going to have a special every day. A lot of things, a lot of things are marked down, most things, 50% off the last day of the cruise. Yeah. So, where you would normally pay $15, $17 for that t-shirt, the last day of the cruise would be about $8, maybe 7 Okay? Now, you got all excited as soon as you got on the cruise ship you know, settled in, and maybe the next day, which is the second day, you go buy souvenirs at the gift shop. Well, you could have saved half by waiting until day six or day seven, whatever the last day of your cruise is. Okay? So that's a tip that will save you 50% off with getting the very same things. Sometimes if you hold out, you get more savings. But they definitely do this. So this isn't something about if they do it. It's about what day or when. Look out for that. Uh, let's see. Another one. Google the best and worst rooms for your cruise line and plan accordingly. Now, as for me, I went to a travel agent. Okay. What you want to do is if you're going to a travel agent, already have this information in your head. All right. Because the cruise line, I mean, the travel agent, they're going, they're going to give you all the benefits, okay? But they're not going to tell you things like specifically about the rooms. Because think about it. It's not that they're trying to get over on you. But there are thousands of rooms, okay? So being that there's thousands of rooms on the cruise line, they can't remember 
which room is the worst and which room is the best. They can't do that with everything. They're human just like us, okay? So it's no way for them to store all that information in their head. What you want to do is, if you already have plans on going on a certain cruise line, all right, and say you're going to a travel agent, what I would recommend you do is Google that cruise line and simply in the Google search put in worst and best rooms for that ship that you're interested in. This is before you go to your travel agent, okay? Um, that will give you insight on some rooms that you need to stay away from. Um, and that would only matter to you if you're the type that's a sensitive sleeper, um, if you're the type that prefer a in room because it's near the elevator or whatever, if you uh, need a handicap accessible room or whatever, these things matter. So if those things matter, then I would recommend that you put in your Google search the name of the ship, the cruise line, and just put in best and worst rooms. Um, and that way, if say if you're at the travel agent, they try to give you room 5321, uh, five, okay? They try to give you 5321. Uh, you already know that that is over top of a noisy area and you're a light sleeper. So you can tell the, the, the representative, the cruise agent or the travel agent, you can tell them, no, I don't want that room. We're going to have to choose something else, even if I have to pay a couple of dollars extra. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Those are things that you need to think of. Also, if you're paying for your cruise or booking your cruise um, online, you're not going, you're opting out of the travel agent. If you're doing it that way, um, they will tell you, they will let you choose which room. You know, they may have, okay, for that, for that price or that, that kind of room, uh, we have 15 rooms. Choose which room, room you have. And they'll tell you the room number and you choose which one. At that point, you want to already have or either stop that process, open another uh, page, and then put in best and worst rooms. And that way you'll know, okay, I'm not just choosing one, two, three, four. I'm choosing that because I know that that room will suit me best. And that's one of the options. You understand what I'm saying? So hopefully I'm getting across what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Um, optional restaurants. Okay. They have optional restaurants as well as stores. They have a Ben & Jerry's. They have a Sorrento's Pizza. They have, uh, I can't think of the other ones right now. They have Starbucks. They have like some steakhouse. If you're worrying about or if your focus is on, I want to maximize my vacation. I want to save on other unnecessary um, areas. And see, we define what is unnecessary. We define as individuals what is a priority. That's the beauty of the way that I'm giving you these tips because you take whatever tip that still allows you to have a lot of fun and enjoy your experience, but you're able to accommodate some things that you normally wouldn't be able to because you eliminated some things in some other ways. So, example, let's do an example. If I want to go on a scourge and like swimming with the dolphins. Swimming with the dolphins is like $300 per person. Okay. Now if I want to do that, I'll just leave it at that. If I want to do that, then I may opt out of the optional restaurants and stores. For one, this is just my way of thinking. It may not be yours. Optional restaurants is not necessarily needed for me because the buffet is going to have everything. Example, the optional uh, Starbucks, uh, Starbuck, no, let's, let's do Ben and Jerry. The cruise line literally every day, all day. I told you that it's buffet, all you can eat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and also midnight buffet. But in between that, you have unlimited pizza and unlimited ice cream. Now, why? Being that I know I want to swim with the dolphins and it costs $300 per person, I may have a party of four. So right there alone, that's $1,200 just to swim with the dolphins. So if I know I already got kicked out 
or my priority is to, to swim with the dolphins and spend twelve hundred dollars for my party of four, then it's no it's pointless for me to spend money on specialty ice cream when I can get as much free ice cream as I want. Are you understanding my example? So it's all about prioritizing and also being hit to little things that add up that expense. So um as for me, I may choose to just do the buffets, okay? Um, and that's up to you. Again, it's all about what you um, <coughs> define as enjoying your experience the, the most, maximizing your savings, and prioritizing, okay? Um, the next one would be... The specialty coffee, since we just sprung up coffee. Um, they have a Starbucks. If you can opt out of paying $5 a day, then, and it's say if your cruise is for seven days, you're looking at, what, $35 just on coffee for one person for the whole cruise. Now, if you have a party of four, and they all want coffee every day, think about it. You're spending $170 just for coffee for your party of four on that cruise, $170. Now, if you're one of those who can't live without coffee, if you're one of those that literally have to have it, sure, go ahead and do it if that's what makes you happy, if that's one of your priorities. But if it's not, then why not go to the buffet and get unlimited coffee, add some ice to it in your little container or whatever, and keep it rolling. They have all kinds of specialty creamers and all that at the buffet area for free. Okay? Or you can bring your own little package or your own little specialty coffee, put it down in your luggage, and have it for yourself. They have unlimited hot water at the, um, the, the dining room and stuff. You can go in there, just simply fill up your container or whatever that you bring with you, and then you have your own specialty coffee doesn't cost you anything because you already have it in your home. So that eliminates one extra expense right there as well. Again, if that's something that is important to you. All right. Uh, what else? Internet. Let's talk about Internet. This is why I will be uploading this big amount of videos, huge amount of videos, of all the things that's going on there and what I'm doing and all that kind of stuff, uh, outfits of the day and all that. I'm going to wait till I get home. Okay? Why? Because they charge you for the internet, you guys. Now, they offer you these packages, these package deals. These package deals, you literally have to pay like for a thousand minutes, you have to pay like a hundred and fifty dollars, a hundred and thirty dollars. And mind you, if you had a high-speed uh, internet or computer or whatever connection, then a thousand minutes maybe wouldn't really matter to you that much to pay a hundred and fifty dollars or so. However, their computers or their connection, I should say, because their computers are up to date, but the connection is slow, surprisingly slow side eye. So therefore that thousand minutes that you paid a hundred and fifty dollars for winds up being maybe about six hundred minutes of actual um pro, pro, you know product productivity on there. Productiveness. Whatever. Okay, you understand what I'm saying. So being that you're on vacation you can wait till you get home. That will save you $150 right there. Just simply having people wait for the videos, you know, um, doing any business or whatever. You can save $150 by just opting not that out and just waiting till you get home. And that's what I'll be doing. Okay? So just know that the Internet service is not Wi-Fi. Like when you go to a hotel and, you know, you got Wi-Fi, you just got to connect your in No. Uh-uh. You have to pay for that. Also know that phones, phones and cell phones, 
you will not be able to use them. And if you are able to use them, it will cost you, and it will cost you big time. Some options, whether that's their phone or not, can cost you up to $7 a minute. Yeah. One of the smart things to do is to, A, wait till you get off of the ship or wait till you port to your location or B use a phone card at the location that you go to those are some options okay now as for me daddy is not trying to ride with me not calling him until we port even though we're gonna be there for three days in Bermuda he ain't trying to have it okay so he like I don't care if it costs you twenty dollars a minute you need to call at least once a day and he went twice. I talked him down at once. So that's something, again, we all prioritize. That's something that I cannot go without. That's something I cannot opt out. And I have to uh, do it this way. So I'm just telling you guys ahead of time because a lot of people, you know, like me, I was like, yeah, I'm going to take my cell phone and I'm going to upload the pictures directly. I'm thinking it's like a hotel or something. No, boo-boo. I, yeah, I had to think about that. It's not, and they're going to charge you. See, remember what I said in the other video right before this? That nine seventy five special cruise price winds up being fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred or more per person. That's the example I gave you. That's an example, but that example shows you how something that is a special price, great deal though, for all that you're getting winds up being something else unexpected. But I'm showing you how if you know these things before you even get into it, if you know these things, if you're aware of these things, and if you already have it focused in your head what you're going to have as a priority, then you can still maximize your savings and enjoy your time. Not be cheap, but get great value. It's a difference. Okay? The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is excursions. Okay, excursions, uh, this will be my last thing I'm talking about. Excursions are whatever you try to do once you get to your location. For, in, for instance, if you like to um, go diving, that's an excursion. Those things cost extra. Now, you can either get them through the cruise line which are going to be a safer way and I say safer because it's guaranteed you already know you know that it's taken care of and also the ship cannot leave you until you return for instance if that excursion goes a little bit over time they can't leave you if you plan your excursion through a direct party meaning that you contact them yourself or if you get off the ship and a lot of vendors will be there holding up signs about the excursions that you can go on and all that. If you go through that, which is considered a direct vendor or a direct transaction, they are not obligated to hold that ship. That's why even on YouTube, if you put in uh, people left behind on a cruise, you're going to see videos, and I, I'm probably going to do one too. You're going to see people when they leave in the port. The, the cruise ship and the people on the, the cruise ship, you're going to see them taking videos of people running and and they didn't make the cruise ship. A, because they wasn't keeping track of their time. B, they wasn't, um, it, they maybe went on an excursion and it, it, it wind up being a little over the time. Something may happen that couldn't be avoided. So these are things to consider. If you're iffy or um, you're fresh out the gate like I am, um, you may want to plan your excursions the first time until you get a certain comfort level. You may want to plan it with the cruise ship. Why? Because it gives you that security that you may need. That is why I went to an actual uh, uh, travel agent because I wanted that extra security being a first-time cruiser. Um, being the first time I've traveled abroad. I wanted to be able to have that security. And for me, 
planning my excursions through the cruise line gives me that security until I'm able to, you know, handle that myself. Okay? Um, so those are the differences. Now, the next major difference is if you get the if you get the excursion through the cruise line, be willing to pay double the price. Example. We're going to use the swim with the dolphins again. If I go directly to the dolphin um, the the center or the excursion that's specifically for swim with the dolphins. If I go to their website, I can actually get it the excursion for like maybe 225. I could swim with the dolphins for half an hour for 225 dollars per person. Or I can get it through the cruise line and pay 310. Do you understand what I'm saying? Doesn't give you anything extra. But it does give you the security. And if that's important to you, if that's a priority for you, then you want to do it through the cruise line. If it's not, and if it's something that, that you can handle on your own, and it's something that um, if something comes up, you can take care of it, then you come out better financially doing it yourself, going directly to the vendor or going directly to the company. Okay? So those are major things that um, a lot of people don't um, know about. Um, excursions are not cheap. Okay? Again, this is how a lot of the tourist areas and stuff make their money. Okay? So um, you want to uh, you want to check out the different excursions, and once you register on your cruise line, uh, once you do it, the registration and all that, um, depending on how close the cruise is as far as in time frame, I think once it hit like 45 days or so, you can actually pull up the excursions. You can pay for them. If you're doing them do on the cruise line, through the cruise line, you can pay for them, prepay for them and everything. So, um, yeah. So, that's one thing. Um, and then also, you know, they'll already have souvenir shops and stuff like that uh, once you get off of the, um, once you get off of the cruise ship. Um, I mentioned this before in the paperwork uh, when I mentioned things that you need to bring with paperwork, but I'm going to mention it really quickly now. Um, when you're getting off of the cruise line, when you're getting off of the ship, know that they're going to have a line for people that have passports because passports are optional, okay? And then they're going to have a line for people that have documentation. Documentation would be your birth certificate. Not a copy, but the original. Photo ID, driver's license, state ID. And if it applies, you're going to also need marriage license or divorce decrees or whatever if your name is different than on your birth certificate. Okay? That's going to be one line, and then passports are going to be another line. Passport line is going to move quicker. That means on and off, you're going to get in and out. Know that that's one of the differences of why some people make sure they have a passport versus documentation only. The other thing, if you get left behind, and that scenario as I stated before about people that get left behind, you have to be able to get home on your own and pay for it. And you're going to need a passport. So that's why these things are important factors to know and to have. Okay? So, that... Um, touches base with the, um, you know, things that you, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people think they're just going get to get off the ship. No, it's going to be two separate lines. And know that the passport line is going to move quicker. All right? So I hope this has helped you guys. I do have a video coming up, and it's going to be specifically targeting how to save money all year long so that you can go on maybe family trips or vacations, so you can maybe purchase big items, like maybe if you're trying to put a down payment on the house, or maybe you're trying to get a down payment for a car, maybe you're trying to buy a car straight out, maybe you're trying to start a business. See, these tips can be used for not just one thing. These are just great savings tips in general. Now, this was specifically about a cruise, but the next video I do, I think it's going to be probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, is going to be specifically about how to save money all year long 
so that you can do whatever that is that you thought was unobtainable so that you can do whatever you think that um, whatever that you've always wanted to do that was in your bucket list or your dream list and not even be making that much difference in income. But if you're smart with how you save all year long, maximize your savings all year long, then that will free up monies for you to be able to do these very same things that you thought was unobtainable. So on that note, you guys, I love you all so much. I hope this has helped you in some way, shape, or form, and be blessed.